please welcome Chris Roberts. Uh, that's actually kind of a hard video to follow, but we're going to try our best. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so welcome to Austin. I think we had our very first Citizen Con here uh, back in 2013, so it's great to be back. It's a little larger venue than we were before, and we've got a lot more things on. Uh, but it's great to have you all here, and um, I'm really excited by everything we're going to reveal and show today. So, uh, for you guys, uh, we decided we're going to do something very different this Citizen Con than what we've done in the past, because normally what we do is we show some technology we're working on that in the future you guys are going to get to enjoy, or uh, we prototype some gameplay that's going to come in a year or two's time, like we did with, uh, in 2017 with GamesCon and CitizenCon. Uh, but this year we made a decision uh, quite a while ago to focus on actual gameplay content. Our original goal was to have the mission that we're going to show you now be live on the day. Obviously, the OCS and 3.3 is taking a little longer. So, uh, But the mission that we are going to play and show and walk you through is a mission that you'll all be able to play in 3.3 once Lawville and Hurston's in. Uh, all the stuff's in there, warts and all. It's not faked. It's actually proper gameplay. It's not scripted. Uh, this is a, a mission that can happen in various different locations and have different parts. Uh, and I think it's really cool, because it's going to be content you guys are going to be enjoying in the very near future, uh, as soon as we get 3.3 out of PTU and into live, and then we're releasing no, um, the Hurston Lawville aspect, so it'll be good. So I'm going to bring uh, Todd Pappy, uh, live director, to the stage with me. Here he is. <laughs> and um, also, we have Glenn. Where's Glenn? who you may remember from uh, some of our wishes. Uh, uh, and you'll notice he's wearing cowboy boots, just to give. As an Englishman in Texas, he's wearing some cowboy boots. I did tell him that he's put him on the wrong side of his jeans, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> he's got good up. But uh, anyway, so do you want to just say something about what we're going to do here in the the, like it's one of our missions. It is, it is one of our missions. Uh, basically, high-level beat is that it will sh you'll see some of uh, the biomes that we built um, and on the planet. It will take on place on the planet. We're not going to go out in space or anything like that, show off any of the moons. But it is uh, basically, it's real. I mean, that, that to me is the, the most exciting part. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm yeah, out here. <laughs> and, I think, and I think one of our focuses going forward is focusing on game content yes. Yes. Uh, in the immediate future, in the current patches, improving the experience, uh, the feel of the game. Even though we're in alpha, or pre-alpha, um, we're really focusing on play experience now and building that up. And yes. So this is one of the steps towards Well, that. especially getting OCS and the core tech out. Right. You know, that, that, that allows us to do what we need to do. Okay. So Glenn's booting up real quick. And then we can go. It's a real, a real mission, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> and also, one, one caveat, since you, you, you guys know that 3.3 three is in uh, Evercati, um, is that it is a 3.3 three three build, which means potentially it will be not unlike a Star Citizen demo that couldn't be there could be a crash in it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you may also see some wonky behavior from AI specifically, yes. because it's all about multiplayer syncing. These are all things yes. that we're aware of and working, but this, we are showing you in 3.3, in the current build, um, with uh, content will be coming with Hurst and Lawville. And net binding, or net? Yeah, so yeah, the only thing that we have off on this is the, um, the band culling. So yes. this does have asynchronous background loading and object container yes. streaming but we have the bang culling off because that's actually the most unstable element of what's currently in the 3.3 test of the Evercati mm -hmm. because it's, uh, it adds another level of complexity with a, 
the multi-threading and the possible issues that can happen and how things get out of sync. Yeah. So in this, we just have that turned off, uh, which means performance won't be as good as the Evercaddy are getting with bang culling in it. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's OK, and obviously, it's only going to get better. And so bear with us if there's a crash. Hopefully, there won't be one. Um, we'll see. We're doing it live. Yeah. As someone, yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. This As is someone a, famously said. This, this, is, <laughs> <laughs> this really is the first yeah. time. Something F this, <laughs> a bit live. <laughs> All right. Almost there. <laughs> What's that? Those two need to go in. OK. Yeah. All right. Because we're, we're, we're doing this as a multiplayer, so some friends can join us. So we're just waiting for um, the last two people to join. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we good? What it was happening with um, Scott and Glenn? Yeah. Do we have to wait for them to be in too? Yep. I guess we should have queued this up before, huh? Yes. Wasn't that the 15 minute wait thing that we had? I hope not. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that we said we were doing 15 minutes before. Yeah. That's. That was a mess. <laughs> Is it the beard? <laughs> it's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Rendell around the corner here telling Todd something important. Happening. Or this one. And once we get that one in. He's in, he's in. Here we go. Yeah. So are we ready to go now? Yep. We're good, right? Okay. Uh, can we switch to player one, please? There we are. All right, so we are waking up. Uh, in our hab in Lawville, uh, Hurston's the first planet that is a fully formed planet with a yep. proper landing zone. Uh, and uh, the goal is to have what we call the habitation system, the hab yep. system, that will give you persistence. You'll start off in a small apartment, but you can earn money, move your way up, upgrade to bigger, better places, get a penthouse, uh, get real estate on different locations. Uh, and a longer term goal with the HABs, I think in 3.3, the HAB system is going to be not that different than uh, what we have currently in 3.2, except for there will be persistence when you're in the session. session. So you can go back to your HAB and through of it. But our long term plan is you have a dedicated HAB that is actually a unique location you can go to, and every player has a different one. And yes. we have a city big enough to be able to sort of handle that. To support and the other it. landing sounds, which you will see in a little bit. And obviously, depending on where you, when you get into that, that hab might be very close to the city, or you might have to take a train out to your habs. To your habs, yes, exactly. And you'll sort of see the scale when we get out to the city. 
So let's wake up, Glenn. We'll get up. Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a night last night. Look at that. There's some beer, reading. <laughs> yeah, Glenn's, and this will be a personal choice. You can have a messy hab yes, or, or a clean. tidy hab. It'll be completely up to you how you want to hold your items. But uh, let's go, I don't know, it's kind of more, let's, let's get a cup of joe. Yep. So this is, uh, this is actually going to be showing off our... This is a more in-depth interaction system and how this can lead to missions because we want you to pick up things. We want you to interact with the world and be able to look around and hunt for clues and those types of things. Go ahead and get your coffee. Right, so yeah, we have a cup of coffee. We have the, the interaction system where we can... Uh, Inspect it. Yeah, you know, look at all items. So you'll be able to... So it's, it's a far... So in 3.3, you'll be able to look at your weapons, look at objects you pick up. And the long-term goal is pretty much most items in the world will be interactable. You can take them, you can move them persistent, you can store them in your spaceship, yep. you can store them in your hab. Um, and we're also... Uh, not in 3.3, but we're going to be expanding the player status system. We already have the stamina that happens, and you need oxygen. But um, you know, as we're not going to go full core, like survival or hard sim, but you are going to occasionally need to drink some liquids or eat, eat some food. Or breathe. Uh, or, or breathe. <laughs> uh, and it's really just resource management, not any different than you would have resource management for your ship that needs fuel and uh, you know, power and stuff like that. So. Uh, We'll have our little cup of joe in the morning, wake us up. There we go. Uh, and Good. so some of the things we have in the hab here are also uh, to play with early in 3.3, but we'll actually have more gameplay and meaning. But here's an example of placing and putting stuff around. So you'll be able, so it's not just like the old uh, system in the hangars where you had to put it on certain spots. Yep. You can place items anywhere you want, pick them up pick them up from crouching. So there's a lot more interacti interactive ability and tactileness. Uh, the other thing, longer term, short term in 3.3, it won't be so important, but we are going to move to what we call a physical inventory system, which means that uh, you have to be able to carry the things you've got. There won't be any sort of magic inventory where you can just go to your Moby Glass and pull out five different armor sets and 100 different weapons. So it'll be what you can carry on your person, or if you've got a bag or a backpack, or what you can put on your spaceship or what you can store on your hab, um, or will be all things that would sort of constrain your uh, equipment that you can have and use. And that would also be a reason as you play the game, you earn more money, you can buy bigger places, bigger spaces, more ships, more places to store it. But again, managing your equipment. It's meaningful is, choices. It's like I mean, a resource yeah, to manage. Yeah, it's basically we just want the players to make meaningful choices. I, I'm going to take this armor set and do this. I'm going to take this ship and do this. If you can pull it from anywhere, you're not making those hard choices. Uh, OK, so let's head out into uh, the common area of the hab. We're on, I believe, hab L19. L19 residences. Right, yeah. So uh, on the AI side, we'll see more of it we go on, but it's the early days of the AI going about their lives. There's a lot more that's going to come in. We have this usable system, I think we've talked about in the past, yeah. uh, that uh, longer term is what allows the AI to do everything from playing an arcade game to sweeping the, the floor to having a drink. Well, even, even allowing the player to do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, and the, and the player, you can use the same systems and animations. Uh, and so we want to build a living, breathing city or locations. Because the, the thing is, in a multiplayer game, if you just rely on the players for the population, the problem is everyone's running around trying to do a mission or earn money and they're sprinting left and right. So the AI is very important to give locations a sense of life, um, which is uh, what we're um, going to be aiming for here. You're going to see more of it. We're going to go down to the base of L19. And when we look back at it, you'll sort of see it's a tall sort of upside down bracket. Uh, like here's the admin office in the, in the bit of L19. So again, that's where you could drop off or have things delivered. Um, you can sort of see how tall it is up on it. And let's 
I head out? I think this area holds 100 halves. Yeah, so each building holds 100 halves. Yeah. So as more players come online and they would start in Lawville, we would actually have more of these buildings that would be populated. Yeah. So here we are, we're out here. This is uh, looking out the vista onto Lawville. Uh, see a fair amount of security. And uh, we again, have the, the spaceport across the way. Yeah, Tessa Spaceport is the main spaceport of Lawville that's coming. And I uh, can't see if we ship, but there should be uh, ships uh, coming and going as well as uh, players. So we have ships that are actually coming out of quantum travel in orbit and coming down, landing on the pad or taking off. Um, but I didn't see any one of them. But that's because it's also systemic. So it doesn't always happen on cue because it's not scripted. Uh, and here we're just going to we'll carry on because we're going to show you a little bit of uh, Lawville. Uh, and this area is sort of the kind of, what, the L L19 worker area of it, yes. right? Yes, and the, I mean, this this is about selling the security building and the oppression of Hurston uh, yeah, towards so, its workers. So Hurston's a corporate uh, planet, and the Hurston Corporation owns and runs it. So as you see, a fair amount of security around. They're, a, they're maybe, I wouldn't say, the nicest employer. Uh, they want everyone to, to do their job and not complain, even if they don't get paid a lot and the air quality is really bad. Uh, so uh, you know, you'll see a fair amount of Hurston security around. Uh, they will you know, stop and do checks on other NPCs, tell you to move on and hurry up. Uh, and here we are coming out onto, I think, the main plaza of this particular area. Uh, and uh, I think I think we call it leaves then, right? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and the long haul. So we'll go into the bar. Yeah, and and bar. You know, we've I've talked about bars long term being locations you would go to get some gossip, find out what's yep. happening, maybe have some slightly shadier missions that you can accept versus the sort of more um, clean scrubbed ones that you would get on yep. say the job boards. I love that poster. Yeah, the hammerhead. So every now and then? Yeah, and we're, we're in an active city, so we actually have full trains of transit. Yeah. They were done. Hey. I just went back. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's the light flickering. You want a drink or I something? I need a drink. So this is our early implementation of the bartender, and you can order whiskey or you can order beer. So Glenn is going to do an Irish coffee in kind of a messed up way, not the proper way. What do you want? Appreciate it. Good choice. As I said, this is the 3 3 build. There's yep. some There's visual still glitches. Still some glitches. Above, uh, like and gravity. some wonky gravity. <laughs> Fine once we get it. Yeah. It doesn't reset the gravity Clear vector around. until you actually pick it up. So. We got ice cube simulation. There you go. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. And there is only one eight, there's only one cube in the whiskey, which yeah. is also very important. All right, let's have a drink. Let's not let's have a drink, but not too much. So again, in in the future, when we're talking about the player status, you'll be able to drink too much, stumble around, have yeah. those those types of wonderful <laughs> things. Yeah, maybe you have one drink, you'll have a little bit of courage, you're like <laughs> a little bit more strength in combat, but too many drinks, so you lose your coordination. All right. We've missed the trains both times. So. One. Okay, let's see. Uh, all right, we have a. Uh, we got an invite to go see Clovis Darnley in the reclamation and disposal. So this is the this is the mission that is the one that we're going to show. So yes. Let's accept that. And we 
just need to go to reclamation disposal and go from there. And this is one of the mission givers on Hurston? One of the multiple ones. He obviously had a few drinks. Yeah. <laughs> so over here, we've got Maria Part. Um, this goes back to player status and uh, kind of the idea behind Death of the Space Man, where when you die, this is where you'll, or die, this is where you'll come back. And you'll be, respond here. Yeah. And then also when you get injured um, and the med pin takes you back to a certain percentage and then it, it will fade over time and then you'll need to actually get fixed up here, whether it's at a hospital or by the Apollo or Endeavor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the idea is the med pen is a short-term solution that stops bleeding and lets you operate for a little while, but if you don't go and get longer term fixed up, the bleeding will come back and you'll eventually die. So even with med pens, you still need to go back and get medical yes. help and fix yourself up, just like repairing a, you know, you're like a ship, you repair yourself. Uh, so here we are, reclamation and um, disposal. Apologies. The air is especially dreadful today. <laughs> yeah. Still alive, I think. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Reclamation and Disposal. My name is Clovis Darnelli. Wonderful to meet you. What can I do for you on this fine day? Well, you gave us an invite about work. Let's ask about that. It's an excellent question. If you're not particularly concerned with shades of morality, I may have a lead on some, well, let's just call it questionable materials in need of forceful collection. The devil's in the details, I believe. Read them well. Okay, there's a uh, satellite that's fallen from orbit and it has a prototype blade in it we want to check out. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Wonderful. Best of luck. Okay, let's head out to the Crash site, we're gonna just check the mission, I guess. Yeah, make sure we got it. Oh, we're gonna do a com call, all right. We're gonna ask one of our friends. Okay, fingers crossed. Yes, definitely. Hey, man. There he is. Uh -oh. Hands a bit weird. Uh -oh. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Nice, man. Hey, look, I just got this mission. Um, apparently, I need to go out to some location for some potential salvage. Would you, if you want to? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Over the area, I'll definitely join up with you if I see you. Is he, did he calibrate, yeah, by the way? You look interested. Definitely. All right, man. I'll catch you out there, yeah? Meet up with you. All right, man. Later. <laughs> All right, dude. Juicies. All right, so we, we, we come, obviously there's still some kinks in the facial stuff like that. Just a little I'm not, bit. I'm not, I'm not sure whether uh, we calibrated correctly. And doesn't Chris have glasses or not? Chris does have glasses. Yeah, right. so, uh, but that, that is an example of comp calls in RTT with the face over IP, not the best example of, of the quality that you can get out of it, but we have face over IP that's working right now in the 3.3 OCS branch that the Emicadi had. They can actually play it too. And they could, yeah, and you'll also be able to go and check it out in the LAN room, the Drake uh, LAN room. Um, okay, so. So that's L19. That is, uh, or yeah, sorry, that is the, that's, that's the HABs that that's we were at we're in, in the, the security building. 
on the yeah, behind the security building, and then where's the like the worker trade stuff? Uh, right? We're gonna head, head to Tammany and Sons, which is uh, a shop, and we're gonna buy some armor. We're gonna buy a multi-tool as well because we'll need that for the mission. So straight ahead, that is to the business district that we'll be working towards for three four. Yeah, don't try to cosplay those little uh, the cheap, bags. cheap plastic bags, breathing yeah. apparatus things. It could, could may not end well. Yeah. All right, so this is, uh, the new, this is the actual new flight suit that's coming with 3.3. .3. It's the RSI Odyssey. It's uh, very cool. So uh, we're just going to get it. By the helmet. Okay. That. And then we need to go. Do we have the suit? I don't have the suit. Yeah, we have the okay. suit. We need to go get the multi-tool. So think of the multi-tool like uh, your personal utility item that will have different attachments that you can actually use, whether that be cutting or welding or salvaging. Hopefully mining, I can talk them into mining. Yeah, like, like small scale mining. Yes, very small scale mining. <laughs> All right. At least put the undersuit on, there we go. You sure we got the thing? It says undersuit empty. Oh. Yeah, okay then. Hey, you only did buy the helmet, by the way, yeah. just let you know. Did it not let you be able to buy the RSI suit? No, I don't think it gave him the right items. Write that up as a bug. Yes. So just put a little armor on top of the RSI uh, suit. And let's. We'll do the helmet when we fly. Yeah, you don't need that on Hurston, even though the air quality is bad, it is breathable. All right. Okay. So we're going to make our way to the train station. So this is the workers' district, and that's how the workers get taken to the strip mine. Do you see the trains going by or not? There you go. Look, yep. so you see, so there's actually functioning, I don't know if you saw that, but there's functioning trains in uh, Lowell. We're actually going to get on one of the trains. We just saw one go past and go to the metro station now. Oh, there you go, see? Um, and uh, yeah, you just there's actually a functioning transit system that we're going to head to, uh, which is very cool. And even when you're flying outside, you can see yeah. the trains on their tracks going the between the different stations. We have the admin office that we just passed. That's the residencies. And then we've got the security building right here. Off limits. So we watch it, we stare at it, we like hang out too long, we tell us to move along. Again, there's still some kinks if everyone's working out on that side of stuff. Uh, let's go to uh, the Metro Center uh, to get to the spaceport. Welcome to Metro Center. So here we can either go to the perimeter line, which will take us to the outskirts, 
or we can take the spaceport line, which is going to take us into the TSA uh, spaceport. So that's where we need to go to get our Welcome ship. To Metro Center. Transfers to the perimeter spaceport. There's six and different gates line. that the player can enter into the city, um, and plus the spaceport. So it gives you just kind of the idea of sc the scale of the city. And all these trains run on a schedule. So actually, if we take a look, we can see above. Uh, train arriving in 103 seconds. What about the other track? Look at the other track. Train arriving oh. in about oh, 20 seconds. Oh, okay, well, Tra trains departing. Trains departing in 26 yeah. seconds. So it just came in. So we missed it coming in. All right. But yeah, the, basically the trains come and go. So you actually walk out and go and take the other train. Glenn, do you want to do that? Or just watch you go. Uh, one thing that you will notice is that the transitions between teleports uh, or between elevators as well as uh, this is basically like a fancy transport. Um, Off it goes. Let's go to the other train. So <laughs> okay, we got 53 seconds. We we'll simulate this is we're going to do commuter citizen. So if you miss the train, you have to wait for the next one. I saw somebody that was very excited about that on Reddit. So yeah, yeah. This one's for you. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to share. I just I love the fact that there's a running uh, transit system, and you know you you have to catch it right and. Uh, and actually, the, the team worked very, very hard on this, putting this together yes. and actually building the tracks, building um, everything that goes into it. Uh, so the other thing. Any minute now. Come on, little trainee. There you go. See, in, in Star Citizen, the trains do run on time. <laughs> This one started. We may crash. Yeah. We may do some other stuff, but our train is definitely yeah. run on time. <laughs> so the AI in the future will be able to transition uh, between the spaceport and uh, L19. Right now, they don't. So it will be a yeah. You'd, you'd a have a, you have a train. People getting on, getting off, yeah. sitting down in the seats, uh, just like you would get a normal commuter train. So the usable system, the new usable systems, only just come online. And it's one of the reasons why. You're not seeing that many of the actions that are going. But this is all physically real. We are traveling in uh, Lawville. Uh, and you can see, you can see out. You, the, you look back, you see the tracks, right? And that's the, uh, the uh, Hurston Dynamics uh, building, which is four kilometers high. Lawville itself is about 24 kilometers in uh, sort of diameter, the, the main area of it, uh, which is about equivalent to Austin, actually. So uh, Lawville's about Austin size in real world scale. So that's, you know, uh, I think it, not many games sort of do things at the level of scale that we're doing. Uh, so here we are coming into TISA Spaceport. And longer term on the transit system, we're going to have uh, line switching, uh, a lot more options that will be much more like a real uh, you know, kind of metro system or, or track. Because right now, it's, they sort it's of run point, point, to point to point B, B but yeah. we're going to have them like have actual m multiple stops that you're going off, multiple hub stops. Um, it's uh, anyway, it's fun. So there you are. And, uh, whatever the whatever the train simulator out there, we're doing a little bit of that too. All right. There we go. I'm going to head to the spaceport, which would be the place. Make sure you have all property when clearing customs. Have all the relevant information ready for inspection. All right. So longer term with the law and order system that we're going to be working with, going between places, uh, you know, depending on what you carry, there'll be checkpoints. So you won't be able to necessarily, say, carry weapons or contraband. Uh, and that's kind of what these custom points are. They're not fully operating uh, yet, but that's the longer term goal. Won't be in 3.3, but as the law and order system comes in, that's all going to be part of it. 
And here we are. Just, just, just for the smugglers, that makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, you've got to find a backdoor entrance yeah. or how to come or how to hide it. And smuggling is a specific kind of gameplay that we are going to add to what's happening here. So here we're in the main concourse. And you can sort of look out. Yeah, ignore the glitching AI. We have lots of those. Um, there's a few ships on uh, part of that. That's actually, we'll go there later. Saw that. That's the Kraken. And you can see the sides of the Kraken because it's got a cutlass on it and a uh, buccaneer, if you take a look and we zoom in. And the LODs in properly. There you go. So it's not a small ship. <laughs> uh, I don't know, are there any ships coming and going? Oh, I'm not this building. I saw it like this morning. Do we disable the ships coming and going? I don't know no. what happened. No. Um, so in the spaceports, you'll come, there'll be sort of hubs. So normally there'll probably be a ship dealer. There is actually a ship dealer on this spaceport, uh, which we'll go and see later on. Uh, there'll be different lounges, so like maybe one for the Chairman's Club, one for sort of UE, USO style one. Uh, and then we're going to have various guilds that if you become a member, they may have their own sort of lounge in uh, the various spaceports. We're going to go and just retrieve our ship uh, to go on the mission. Uh, the rework. Yeah, we'll take the new Mustang, which has been reworked. Your ship has been delivered Not to the, the Aurora. <laughs> no. There you are. It's landing pad. Hangar 4. So over in that direction, we can, we're going to go back and visit later on, is actually where the ship dealer is, which is a big deal, because in 3.3, when Hearst and Lawville are in, you'll be able to buy ships and also rent, rent ships over here. So we'll have ship rental too. Um, you're not going to be able to buy all, every single ship because we're going to have different uh, ship uh, dealers or places that will specialize. Like here's an origin dealer or whatever. Uh, so, and there'll also be used ship dealers. Like yes. we're going to have one on Levski called Teachers, yep. which will be fun. But we'll, we'll go visit this later. Let's go to, uh, oh, and down here, sorry, Glenn. Yeah, Glenn's reminding me. Uh, long term, you're also going to be able to take uh, like transit, just the same like we have the transit system in the train commercial transport to different locations on the planet or off world. So that would be where that would be down on the spaceport and we would build that. So as an NPC, you could fly your own ship or you could take a ship to get there, basically a Starliner. So let's go down um, to the hangar. And uh, in 3.3 of Lawville and Hurston, we've got two hangar types uh, that we've built, which is the large hangar and the extra large because they will hold every ship. Now, obviously, we're going to be in a large hangar, even though we're in a Mustang. It's too big of a um, really hangar for a Mustang. But it sells the scale. Yeah, you'll get a sense of scale. And uh, either for 3.4 or just after 3.4, the small hangar will come in, in line. There are small hangar like, well, it's, it's, places it's, in the spaceport. It's just we haven't finished the interior of the small hangar. Th this is built out of our common elements. So the idea is that these, this is how we scale. You know, we take the we build these big elements, and then we can bring them down and build smaller elements out of that. So here's here's the large hangar, which will fit lots of ships, yeah. not just a Mustang. Yeah. And again, longer term on the we still have some AI going around, but uh, you know, people will be moving carts uh, when you land. They'll bring stuff over to your ship. Uh, so the long term goal is to have the AI uh, in the place, give it a sense of life, give it a sense of operation, so um, you know, they're coming out to refuel helmet. your ship, coming out to fix it up, uh, all the rest of the stuff. All right, let's get our helmet on and uh, go for a flight. Now. All 
systems operational. All right, let's, let's go to comms and ask uh, for permission to. Wow. We just got him in. He's a little blown out. Yeah, we can't hear him either. But he's no. like, okay, you got permission to land. <laughs> uh, permission to take off. Let's say take off. Sorry, I don't land. <laughs> so, Glenn, can you look up or? It's good. All the way up. There you go. Our hangar doors are opening. And again, the hangar is all here. It's all physically correct. So. The hangar is in location. You'd see it outside. When you're playing, you'll see other players coming and going, landing in the hangars. Um, so let's, uh, let's take off. Let's Launch go. complete. So we're also introducing uh, That's the a restricted zone. So you and can see the sort of red area, which is like you're not, until you're after a certain height, you can't fly on. Here we are. That's the Kraken that we were looking out on. Uh, Over there, right there, is, is L19, where you right? uh, yep. spawned. So this gives you a good sense of scale. And I don't know if we can see, but you you should see trains run on the tracks, depending. I think there's tracks to the left there. I can't. Depending on timing. Timing, yeah. I'm just going to get up to appropriate height. And obviously, if you can see, Lawville's made quite a lot of progress from last year when we showed it uh, in the Art Corp demo at uh, CitizenCon. So we spent a fair amount of time uh, building it out and also building it in a way that uh, will be performant uh, for a city of this sort of scale. I think Ian increased the size of the building quite a lot too. Yeah. Yeah, but you get a sense of just how big uh, the main Hurston building is. And in uh, the goal is in 3-4 or just after it, this opens up as a whole separate area that you take a train to go visit in. Hurston's actually built out of six biomes. Uh, we've got desert, savanna, acidic, strip mined, trash, and polluted coast. So here you'll see the polluted coast. Um, if Glenn flew down towards the, the ocean. Yeah, and Hurston is, uh, I believe, about 2,000 kilometers in diameter. So it's about Earth size based on our ratio. So we're doing one sixth to the main planets, and that's mostly just for uh, traversal reasons, because it already, you'll see, it already takes quite a while to fly, not even that far of a distance. And uh, with uh, the old flight model, we had some of it, but the new flight model even more enforces it. So when you're down in atmosphere, the thicker it is, the harder it is for you to go fast. When you get higher up, you'll be able to go faster. So um, yeah, we figured one, one sixth of the size is still way bigger than anyone else is doing on planets. Uh, like one one, but it's a nice balance between having the size and the scale, and being allowing you to traverse it in you know, reasonable times. So I, I think that sort of uh, acid, uh, the acidic area, and then that sort of polluted, polluted coast here, and we're heading uh, towards uh, the place we've been told for the mission. And this particular mission, I believe, can spawn in multiple locations. Yes, this destination it around uh, Hurston. Yeah, um, and so and also have multiple branches to it. And and yeah, and, so. and can be multi-part or not multi-part. Have different yes. 
uh, sides of the stuff. So. I'm expecting all you guys, once you get hold of Hurston, yeah, there'll be lots of pretty screenshots and uh, cool community video of that is, is better than we manage to do normally, so that's yeah. pretty awesome. That's actually one of the nicest things every time we do a new release is seeing all the content that you guys uh, generate. I, I want to see a 25 on 25 fight. Yeah. Here. So we're sort of hitting this sort of savanna style territory. There's a couple of biomes in Hurston that aren't in this one, but there's a, there'll be a, a planetary bombardment kind of biome. So like Hurston uses, they make weapons and they use the, the planet for testing. So that would be sort of this cratered area that they're testing their orbital devices. And then there's going to be the executive gardens, which would be really sort of plush, uh, you know, for the 1% of Hurston that they've got their, you know, walled gardens and it's not polluted and it's, you know, set separately from the from Hoi Polloi. Not the Hoi Polloi, I always get correct on that because Hoi is the, but anyway. Um, right, so let's uh, head towards our destination. How far out are we? Let's see. Where, where, what distance do we scan at? Closer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah, Glenn showboating. And we have in the uh, the new flight model, which I believe is going to be a uh, talk right after this. Actually, it may be. Or, or no, maybe the is it the one? Is is it? after this or one yeah, session after this? I, I think it's one session. Um, so the new one has a lot more accurate on the atmospheric modeling. It's modeling drag uh, and lift correctly. And uh, so the different sizes of atmosphere. It won't be in 3.3, but our goal is to get the new model into 3.4. Um, but it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change a lot of things. Probably takes some getting used to. But there's definitely a different feeling performance down on planets than there is up in space, which is really good. Uh, and, and also, it depends on the ship. So like. A ship that has more atmospheric ability, like a Gladius or something, flies a lot better and can turn much tighter in atmosphere than, <laughs> say, an Aurora, which is basically a flying brick. Uh, so it's pretty, yeah. It's, in, it's, it's, it's very cool, and if you feel it, I don't know in our land room if we're actually showing the atmospheric, we're letting people play with the atmospheric flight there, but it definitely feels different than when you're in space, which is something I think a lot of people wanted to see, uh, and we now have with the new one. Um, so, okay. so the, the goal for scanning, obviously, is to 100%. give you a general area that you need to go and scan in. You need to ping. And then from there, it's about hunting and finding what you need to actually do. So we found it, because Glenn knows where to go. Well, we went to the general mission marker, yes. and then we scanned it. Yes, but you saw it. And the scanning, I mean, the scanning um, gameplay is an ongoing thing, so we have quite yes. a lot of more stuff to come in terms of scanning uh, locations, ships. I mean, there's already some of it for mining, and there's already a bit of it for ships, but in terms of what ships have, what they've cargo, whether you can have things to block the scans, uh, figuring out what resource amounts are in distant areas. And that's what we would consider kind of short-range, mid-range scanning. Long-range scanning would be a different uh, aspect. Um, and that is engaged. more about exploration. OK, so here's the down satellite that we're just sort of going over the top. And we probably should find location to land. around the side. All right, we are down on the ground. Let's go check this thing. 
Ja. So we have a few weapons just in case. And pistol, ammo. Right. I will not okay, let's do it. So this is a Spana. Very different biome from what you guys saw before and what you've seen in our game. Yeah, and this is uh, early days on this. We've still got a lot more stuff to do on our uh, planet tech. Uh, obviously, longer term, we're going to have animal, like uh, fauna, animals, creatures. Yep. So there'll be natural wildlife depending on the place. Uh, there's going to be weather systems. So dynamic weather, um, you know, rain, snow, all the rest of it. Um, and uh, I'm actually looking forward to when we can have a real dense sort of jungle planet. I mean, Hurston's sort of been polluted, so the most you get is either this sort of kind of sparse savanna, or you're going to get the executive gardens. But uh, the tech that the uh, Frankfurt guys and Marco Cabetta has been heading it up is pretty awesome because this thing covers the whole the whole planet, and when you get down, you're right in the middle of it, and it's really really cool. And we're constantly working to improve it, so it's already a level above what we showed. A year ago, and uh, it's you know, it's great. It's gonna be it's gonna be even better as you carry on. So, and here we go. Uh, in the current game, the fire doesn't uh, doesn't damage you, but longer term, the fire will damage you. It'll be part of the player status system. We're gonna measure the temperature and the heat. So over a certain amount, you start to get you start to get damaged. And also, if you're in a tight area, we will actually have the fire entity itself be sucking oxygen out of the air. So like if there was a fire aboard one of your ships, if you don't put it out, it's pulling the oxygen out of the air, which would work with our player status system, which is all the systemic stuff that we want to get into the game. So it's one big sandbox to just live and exist in, and the things that you think would happen as they would in real life uh, do. And it's not just fire, it'd be acid or radiation or other different hazard types that we can actually think of and use. All right, let's, uh, let's go. Top. So we're sort of using, I mean, we've, we've had mantle in for a bit. There's a bit more mantling that's going on. Again, all our player uh, sort of locomotion, movement stuff, uh, you know, Work stage out. one, we're working on it, but yeah, you'll be able to, you know, mantle, uh, vault, mm -hmm. slide, uh, basically do a lot of these sort of parkour style actions and have full locomotion and interactivity with the environment. Again, because we want it to be sort of a, a tactile, exploratory uh, game uh, feel to it. Uh, so, what's happened with the? Is it me or is there is something blown out on the, the, the lights. effects? Yeah. Okay, let's try to make this jump. It's like old school platform game here. All right, are we gonna do it, Glad? Right, we're gonna get run up. Here we go. Okay, back up again. <laughs> like I said, it's like an old school platform game. Okay, all right. Let's do it all first person.
we're actually ducked and crouched in there, I think. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So we're actually crouching. ducked as we're going under yeah. it. First person you can't. Okay. And we mantle up the last thing. All right. Back here. Let's try it again. Settle down. Feel yourself. Yeah, you better get that med pen. Do we get any? Did you die? Oh. Go to? Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to cheat. We're going to use a developer go to so we don't have to have you guys go through the whole thing. Uh, teleport. Yeah, we are going to teleport. Uh, okay, we did say it was real gameplay and live. There you go. So, I think next time you fall, you should probably med pen before you take the next jump. All right, one more time. I did, Glenn like made that jump every single. Yeah. I, mean, I, I didn't see you miss that jump uh, until now. Twice. You got it. All right. <laughs> so, hey. So again, you're looking for a prototype blade. And this goes to the tactileness that we want. Is that the right one? It says nope. TDC 470. Now nope. we, we need a TDC prototype XX. All right. So we can just drop that. Uh, Exactly. Check this one out. Uh, no, it's the same one. So the prototype one does not appear to be there. There you go. So someone's probably gotten here first and taken the prototype. So what we need to do is figure out, and this is an example of a multi-part mission, right? So yes. this mission could have ended here and you had the prototype as one of the things, or it could carry on and someone's taken it. And in this case, someone has taken it. So we've got to figure out, find out where the prototype is. Yeah. We, yeah, we don't have impaling just yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have the physics question. So if we go in here, and this is an example of, uh, you know, like another thing you could do or a puzzle is the, the satellite shut down, but if we maybe get our multi two out uh, and perhaps cut away those restraints there. Get rid of that. Cut those. Falls off. And there'll be things in the game that'll let you read what you can use a pour on. Reset it, and hopefully it will allow us to track where the prototype is. Okay, 
We've installed the satellite's internal system, and uh, there's a prototype somewhere, so let's go find it. Music played in any of this? Stuff? Is there any music? Is there music? No, this thing I think it's mostly in this one. Heard some. We don't have our eye. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't looking good. Uh, there's a cutlass. Hey Chris, if you're out there, I may need some there's help. Someone here. else, and this would be an example of I'm someone else getting the same mission, mission to come yes. and get there. They've sorted our ship, and uh, they've decided to take it out and then try to go for the prototype. And I believe you just called your friend. Can you cut to camera two? Chris, can you go? Chris, go third person. Okay. So, this is our friend that we just called, showing up. Uh, let's cut, show the uh, tail side cutter as well, I guess. Cut to camera three. There we go. So this is the Anvil Valkyrie, and it is the first camera two, first straight to flyable ship that we've done. So it's a Anvil drop ship, uh, and uh, it's going to feature also in Squadron 42, and this will uh, launch with 3.3. Take okay, out five, take out four. Yeah, let's get rid of the bad guys. Take out, take out the bad guys. Cam uh, camera one, Glenn, where are, you, where are you? Let's see where you're going. Where are the, where are the bad guys? <laughs> okay. Glenn is DC. There we go. Uh, that's a stinky shoe. Oh, we lost the... There, right? I can see him on camera too. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Done. We're still having some sync issues in the multiplayer. Uh, all right, I think we, we killed, the, killed all the bad guys. Yes, we have. All right, let's bring it down. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's a big rock. Let's avoid that one. There we go. Oop. Okay. All right, it's up, buddy. All 
All right, thank you very much, hey? Should we do a little talkie? You guys got the foy pun or not? You got the foy pun, I was wondering if you'd said something to each other. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah let's right walk up to him and see if he's. Thanks for the help, man. You're yeah, very welcome. Yeah, no problem. Okay, let's close it. <laughs> Alright, uh, so this is the Anvil Valkyrie. Uh, it is, like I said, uh, Anvil's uh, dropship. Both sides, there's side guns uh, you can deploy. Remote turrets. Uh, it's a bit risky. We still have the desync on the ladder, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we can rather, take a tour of the bottom. Well, yeah. Let's just look around the bottom, Glenn, and then I think we're heading to where the prototype blade is. Let's go through but, the doors. Uh, here's the bottom. You can go up there to where the uh, flight area is. I think if we open up here. It will take us to. It's kind of dark. There you go. Open door. There you go. Whee. And this is where the crew can sit. Uh, this will carry like 20 folks. I think this is probably to the turret in the front, right? Yeah. So the, the, front. the down turret? The down turret in the front. Or the bottom turret. And then. Uh, sleeping quarters upstairs. Um, but if we go back, we've got. Uh, we're not. Rather than us make a mess of the specs, Anvil have a little video that they kindly provided for us to tell us about uh, the Anvil uh, Valkyrie. So let's let Anvil uh, help us out. Ask any soldier. They'll tell you that battles aren't won or lost based on weapons or numbers or even hardware. They're won on choices. For over a century, our ships have distinguished themselves in thousands of civilian and military combat operations. We are proud to announce another weapon in the arsenal of victory. Get ready for the next generation of warfare with Anvil's Valkyrie Dropship. This multi-role weapon platform is designed to get personnel in and out of the hottest combat zones. Featuring four powerful rotating thrusters with VTOL capabilities, the Valkyrie is capable of landing with surgical precision to deploy assets. Fitted with a vehicle bay and ramp, you can also efficiently launch ground-based troop transports or reconnaissance vehicles in the field. Each high-performance operator seat features rugged construction with added support to minimize G-force for up to 20 personnel, making sure that your fighting force arrives on site ready to jump into the fray. And don't think for a second that the Valkyrie can't hold its own in a fight. Two remote turrets featuring size three hardpoints can provide suppressing fire during deployment. Two additional manned turrets provide even more devastating fire to blur the line between dropship and gunship. In the days of antiquity, the Valkyrie were believed to choose which warriors may die in battle and which may live. With Anvil's Valkyrie, we put that choice in your hands. doing in terms of getting to uh, the location we need to get to? Player two's flying there right now. Right. Yeah, yeah I can't, it's, uh, I can't the, 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 the contrast the resolution. Yeah. So, grab that. Um, so we want to look out the side deck line, maybe? Well, you can see the remote gunner from, from player six as well. Okay, sure. There we go. So yeah, let's switch to player six. Can you and turn to the, the right, Daryl? There you go. Go to the, I guess, to the le left, to the front. Yep. So it's a full uh, 180 degrees, I guess, uh, full down. So yeah, the, there's two remote gunner seats that can man the side guns, remote guns, Gatling guns, and then uh, there's a turret gunner on the top and a turret gunner on the bottom, and obviously a pilot, and then whatever the crew that you bring. So. Yeah. 
Someone wants to shoot it? Why not? Well, you want more than one shot? Come on. Hey, bullets cost money. <laughs> you have to restock your ammo, man. Well, you never know when you may need it, you know what I'm saying? Does the side gun take work, by the way? I think it does. This is something you don't, you don't get the thing out of Yeah. Glenn, can you go on the side gun and throw it? No, don't. Keep on the, you go on the side gun and throw it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Let's see if it will work. It's apparently in the shrimp to this. Almost. We're, we're, kind of we're almost there. We're almost there, okay. All right, so we're heading to, uh, we're heading to where the uh, prototype uh, thing is. And, hang on. No, it's camera back, six. Back to camera six, please. So, that's <laughs> yeah, pretty hard for a yeah, 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 here. Why don't player one and player three have a little fun? Yeah. Okay. And this is uh, the, uh, I guess, the military, the version of the Temporal Cyclone, which is also going live with 3.3. Yep. Um, so Wait. we have this, the racing version, uh, I think the uh, this one, but do we have a camera that's I think all versions of them are Okay. Going. All right. We got rid of... I think we got rid of all of them. All the AA? All right, yep. so... Oh, oh. We did improve the rocks. You don't run over every single one of them now. Yeah, that's one of the AA turns, yeah. that's another AA turret we took out. And again, this will be another optional continuation of the mission. So another type of missions that we have in 3.3 yes. uh, on Lawville or Hurston, actually more Hurston, is uh, underground facilities. So yes. this is the very first example of underground systems. So we're going to have underground facilities, caves, uh, other kind of things. And this particular one, this happens to be a kind of, uh, I don't know, waste storage. I think it was dump. it was used for refining, refining and right? uh, but we'll go check it out. So let's go. Let's you go guys down. are too good a shot. You left nothing for us. What's that? What you say? Too good a shot. Oh no. yeah. All right. Well, let's go in down to the facility. Uh, AI, so this is cooperative 
uh, gameplay against FTF AI. Currently, I think in 3.3, you have missions to support it for AI. Yeah. And then we're going to have missions that are supporting around cursed, like this underground one. So this is our first pass on it. You guys have been working very hard on getting all the behaviors working properly. Hit reaction. Oh, I saw one more guy. Can we cut to Scott? My shoot, man. You too. And again, diegetic, VoIP and VoIP will be there. So when you're there, you can talk to your, when you've got people in your team, you'll be able to talk to them. So, and it'll all be automatic based on who you make friends and everything. So in this particular case, you wouldn't need to be linked up in Discord or TeamSpeak or anything. As long as you're in the team, you're all there. It'll be like operating in a real-world fire group. So I think here is where the CDC is. All right, prototype TDC XX. Okay, and we've uh, we've we've recovered the blade now. So this is the second part of the two-part mission, and now we've got to take this back uh, to our drop point yes. in Lawville. Yes, to get paid. To get paid. Now the question is, did you get everybody? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so one of the things that we've been working on is kind of the knockdown system, staggers, those types of things. Uh, we need to do some internal play tests a little bit more, but ideally we roll that out soon. Chris is giving me notes for the, <laughs> for me to fix on the mission. Oh, uh, <laughs> just saying, what, wouldn't it be cool if a few other people stopped out of the yes. popped out on your way back up? We will add reinforcements. Follow the sun, Glenn. Don't stare at it too long. But. All right, let's head back to uh, Mobile. Is this a special color? 
Oh yes, so we would say that the, the Valkyrie that's been flown here is a special Citizen Con edition that uh, if you get the Valkyrie during Citizen Con or within this week, I think you get to have this color as opposed to the standard. Um, we have a digital gray camo and uh, those are two options. There, there's a military version, but that's just as much as Roger that. All right. So we're going to head back to gate two and uh, basically show you guys a little bit. Hey, uh, Chris, can you gain some altitude and let's get there? The side guns, I guess, just don't work. I don't know if those are roads. I'll ask Ian. Uh, no, no, there are. In, yeah, in these, there, there's built in. Those are the. Uh, that's the uh, strip mining bio. They've they've got the roads that they did the strip mining. In. Okay. But there is a road system that is in for the procedural planet setup that uh, we aren't using just yet. It just sort of came online. So we're going to start to carve roads. The same system will be used for rivers and other things down the road. Smile, Scott. How's it going? Gonna be right on the drop off here in a moment. Where you guys? Can we do a shot of player six? Player six, please. Close to the city, um, this is a no-fly zone, and uh, this is our early, early implementation of no-fly zones. Um, eventually, we will have paths that you will need to stick on. You will need to to, uh, to follow. So, very similar to what you get with real-world airports, um, you, can, you just won't be able to fly anywhere and everywhere over the city under a certain altitude. Get to player six. All right, let's land it. Our drop off point is right by gate two, so rather than fly all the way in and then take a train out to the perimeter, we're going to land out here because we can't go in closer because of the no fly zone and then drive to gate two and get to sort of check out the outside of Lawville as well. Thanks for the ride, man. Thanks, Again, that was us using the void, void situation off of the team. We cut the player three. Player three. No, we are on player three now. Oh, changed. sorry. He was in a, his third person here. Scott. Scott. There you go.
come back to player one. So again, this sort of gives you an idea of the perimeter and the scale of the city. Yeah, in the outskirts of Lawville, uh, you know, there's the, we're gonna in different areas. There's a little example of a bit of a shanty town. So these are people that have been pushed out mm -hmm. of the inner city, uh, but people still hang on the outside gates, sell their wares um, to people coming and going from uh, Lawville. Yeah, you can appreciate the size and the scale of Lawville. So we're now down on the foot. You can sort of look up, if you look up, uh, Glenn. Ah. <laughs> it's pretty big, and this is what you fly in and out of. I mean, I think one of the nice things with Star Citizen is just the sense of scale uh, that you get, uh, but also the sense of detail when you're down there on yeah. foot. So it's all the, you know, you can see things, you can interact with them in your hand. Uh, you know, we've got millimeter precision for that but we've got scale that goes to billions of kilometers. All right. Just this through here, should be okay. Not getting custom interview, but longer term, again, we're saying the law and order system Scanning Keep smuggling. it going, people. Yeah. You try and sneak through things, maybe a scan sets off something, you get, get, get taken take, to take the customs. Yeah. And here's the use of uh, the sort of Dropbox uh, that we're putting into 3.3, uh, three, three. so as well as admins that you can pick up and drop things from. Uh, this is also allowing you to drop off stuff, so this is sort of a, a drop that we're going to do, which is uh, to complete our mission. Clovis doesn't like to get his hands dirty. Yeah, exactly. The use of weapons with deliability. Should we just place it? Paramount to us. That done. Now the mission is you are subject to all person laws and can be prosecuted for violations. Yeah, deliver the cargo. We're done. So now we're going to catch the metro. Hopefully, the metro line uh, from the perimeter doesn't run as frequently no, as they are. No, no. Uh, Anybody from Europe will understand. That. So let's get up there and see what's happening. I think we got a little bit of a wait. Person security reserves the right to search travel. The train, run, 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 run! Get in it! Uh, seven! Five, oh, oh, yes! <laughs> You uh, made up for your two jumps, buddy. It, it, it's literally a five minute uh, wait on the perimeter. So that was good, because we're running behind schedule yeah. anyway, so. <laughs> so a lot of painstaking work went into making this real.
Yeah, when the transit system's fully working and we've got the persistent hubs, this would be the way you would get to your location, just like in yes. the real world. So there would be different stops for different uh, sections. And right now, this is only running from gate two to gate one. Uh, eventually, we'll do kind of package things together. So like gate one, gate two, gate three to spaceport or to the main center. Yeah, and the transit system will probably be used in most of our landing locations and the yeah. advanced ones to take you to different areas of interest, you know, from the spaceport to the you know, central physics district to the habitation areas, yes. uh, to the dark CD favela area or whatever, depending on the locations we have. And I think this thing's moving at about 200 kilometers an hour, so about 120, 120 miles an hour. space bullet train. Yes. It's moving. I mean, it's, it's got to cover, you know, 12 kilometers. Yeah, we're in the L19. L19, so we're just going to hop the train. We're going to hop the train to the spaceport and check out the uh, ship dealer. Welcome to Metro Center. Transfers to the perimeter, spaceport, and industry Still line. My friends out there. Yep. As I said, commuter citizen. <laughs> What's the other one? Be considerate to your right. fellow travelers. Do not lock doors. That'll be the other one we're going to do then. Yeah. Uh... So eventually, what we want to do is, is basically, Glenn, can you look at the map real quick? Find you. There you go. So be able to show trains in transit just so you understand where you're going, and how to get there, and where it's at. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Step away from the platform edge when train is approaching. All right. How long is it? It's like a 15 seconds? It's a 30 second wait. It is? Yep. Trespassing or attempting to trespass on train tracks. If it's 30, then, or if it's 20, we wouldn't have made the last one. Right? Yeah. That was pretty. <laughs> reserves the right to search travelers at any time. So ideally, ideally we get a ship for you. Since, uh, yes, since after all that, we should that. buy a ship, I think. for uh, the next sessions of... <laughs> gotta, gotta move it, bud. Yeah, don't break your legs. 
Head into New Deal. So in, in 331 Hurst and Lawville Inn, you'll be able to rent ships and also buy ships. Renting ships obviously will be more uh, economical in the short term because ships themselves... Well, let's you try them out. So. Yeah, let's you try them out and they also cost money, so it's, a, it's an opportunity to rent something, yes. to use it, figure it out. So uh, here's the New Deal. A couple of, obviously, ships that are coming in 33. There's the Phoenix. Thing right there, the new Mustang. And of course, to the right is, yeah, it's just a pretty, pretty looking ship. Yeah, the Hammerhead. The big boy. Again, another ship that's uh, coming with 3-3. I think uh, the Avocado just started to play with it and have uh, fun. Uh, it's, probably, have it's probably a bit out of our price range. Yeah, definitely out of our price range. <laughs> we don't have that much money. Uh, so let's go in and get something that's a little cheaper for us. Yeah. I think Mustang, uh, maybe a hundred thousand or something. Uh, I'd have to take a I'd have to look. This is our first pass at. Uh, we, we're still working on the economy. There's a whole matrix in terms of how much material things got, the manufacturing quality, the brand. Uh, it's the same for items. Uh, so we have a matrix that's done to work with the dynamic economy on ships and on items. Obviously, there's still going to be. Hello some and welcome to the New Deal shipyard where there ain't no such thing as too low of a deal. He just went in Take a look around and just breathe it in. Yeah. You know, it's a little yeah, the lighting so. Is so yeah, like, uh, I don't know how much, that's... Okay, 600. How much is the Aurora? 220,000. I don't know how the 85X is that much more expensive. But uh, let's we get a prospector maybe. Glenn's been wanting to buy. Yeah. All right. There we go. And we have a prospector we can now fly. Uh, there we go. That is the end of the mission demo. So we've gone done a mission in Lawville slash Hurston that is going to be in 3.3 once that comes online. We've shown you the various parts of the gameplay, including the uh, FPS aspect that you can do against yep. the environment, uh, multi-part uh, missions, uh, the various biomes of Hurston, the transit system, uh, the enhanced interaction system, being able to buy or rent uh, ships. We didn't show renting, but that's also be part of this. Um, and they will all be stuff that will come with 3.3 uh, that you guys will play once Hurston and Morville will be on site. So thank you very much for seeing this. We've been yep. working really hard. It's still a bunch more work to be done to get the glitches and bugs out, which you all got to experience a bit of. Um, but uh, we're really kind of excited by the beginnings and the possibilities of what it's going to provide. And I think the rest of the day, we've got a whole bunch of panels that are talking about various things that we've done, including how we built Hurston, some yes. of the technology we We've used some of the other graphics technology we've been working on. Uh, the new flight model, which won't be in 3.3, but it'll be coming in 3.4 onwards, which we're also pretty excited by. Uh, so I would say um, go and visit the panels. Uh, the audio guys have got some really great presentations on their stuff. Uh, character guys have got great stuff. Um, Tony has a uh, design session that he's going to sit in and uh, expound on. So that will also be really interesting. So. 
have a great day, and I'm going to see you at the end of it um, to um, sit down and recap it and uh, have a little talk with you guys. So I will see you uh, later. All right? Thank you. Thank you.